Hey, praise the Lord. This is Brother Jim. This is our sixth and final installment of this VIP leadership training program. And I just appreciate everybody for coming and, and being a part of what we're doing here, Living Water Ministries. And, and this is reaching across America and as well into other countries there in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, other places there in Africa. So, but I want to just welcome everyone. And, you know, this has been an exciting subject to teach. VIP, vision, integrity, and purpose. And I'm not going to be doing any uh, slides today. I just want to talk to you because I'm going to pull everything together in this uh, teaching. You know, in the beginning, the, the first lesson, we talked about uh, the program, what we were going to be teaching. And we started out teaching about uh, vision. And what is vision? Without it, a vision, the people perish. We've we've gone through that that scripture there in Proverbs a number of times already, and but then integrity, integrity being the uh, the moral fiber that holds us together, and then purpose is why we're doing something. You know, in in that beginning part there in vision, we talked about how with vision that. Uh, you know, so many times vision really uh, can mean understanding. A lot of people, when you understand something, you say, oh, I see. And, and what do you say? You're saying you now understand what's being said or what's being done. And, you know, and then we see blind Bartimaeus, that he was blind, he knew he was blind. And as Jesus passed by, uh, and he found out who was passing by. He cried out, Oh, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And they said, Just be quiet. Shh, be quiet, old man. There's something important that we're doing. There's, this is Jesus coming by here. And he cried all the louder, Oh, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Praise God. And Jesus stopped. And immediately, because Bartimaeus cried out, he had an audience with the Lord, and he called him to him, and he said, what, what is it that you want? And he said, oh, that, that I would receive my sight. See, church, I believe that we need, to, we need to earnestly groan in the spirit, hallelujah, to understand the things of God, <coughs> excuse me, to understand what God's doing, what he's saying. Revelation repeatedly says, to him that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying under the church so we can understand. And then uh, Zacchaeus. <coughs> Zacchaeus was a, a short man of, of, and of stature, wasn't very tall. And as Jesus was coming down the road, Zacchaeus wanted to see him so bad that he climbed up in a sycamore tree by the side of the road and got on a limb where he could see him. And as Jesus was passing by and he looked up and he saw Zacchaeus in that sycamore tree. And he said, come down, come down here. He came down and he said, I want to go to your house. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus wants to, wants to dwell and move and minister among people that are willing to go beyond normal. Hallelujah. And so we talked about that in vision and integrity about how that we're learning. We're learning how to become the people where God can trust us and how that uh, Abraham, when he went to offer his only son Isaac upon the altar in Genesis 22, God said, now, Abraham, I know that you fear the Lord. Hallelujah. You're willing to do whatever you've got to do. Praise God. Are you willing to do whatever you've got to do? We've, we've been talking about this. And then over in uh, purpose. Purpose also means cause. David, when he went to the battle 
and he got out there and, and he saw Goliath on the battlefield and the armies of God was there shaking in their in the trench. And David couldn't believe it. And he looked out there and he said, isn't there a cause? What he was saying is, have you guys forgot who you are? See, the purpose, when we keep our eyes on the purpose, it'll keep us pressing forward. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And uh, I believe it was Esther that said, for such a time as this has God brought me here. Hallelujah. She knew that that was where her purpose would come together. Her destiny would begin to be fulfilled when you see your destiny also. That's purpose that we're talking about. So we have a vision, and in that vision, he shows us down at the end where we're headed, and then he builds the character in us to get us there. So we talked about those three, and then we talked about how that works in us. Last week, we covered that in our uh, fifth installment of this teaching about how that works in us as an individual. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, how does this work between you and I? What is the value of, of you having the VIP training and me having the VIP training? How does that give us an advantage with one another that we can now operate in a realm that's pleasing to God? Hallelujah. See, that's the, that's the key of this training is not only to equip us as individuals, but get us to the place that we are operating on the same thing. Hallelujah. As you see, God doesn't give private visions. You may have a vision that someone around you hasn't seen, but there's somewhere, somebody somewhere that God has already prompted that in them. And when you share that vision, they'll grab it. They'll get a hold of it. The word says, write the vision, make it plain. Hallelujah. Why? So people can follow to the purpose of God. Woo. Hallelujah. So uh, we're going to talk today about how that works between you and I. Hallelujah. See, first of all, there's so many times that we feel like, we may feel like we're the only one that's doing what we're doing. Elijah got into that, didn't he? He got into that place where he said, I and I only have not bowed my knee to the prophets of Baal or kissed the image of it. I'm not, I'm the only one, God. When God began to ask him, what are you doing in this cave, Elijah? Well, God said there, he said, Elijah, I have 7,000 that you've never met. You don't know them. You don't know who they are. I've got 7,000 people out there. He said, get out of this cave. The work is not in the cave. The work is out there, Elijah. Get out of the cave. Hallelujah. So he let him know that you're not the only one working on this. I want you to know with your vision, you have a vision and you feel all alone. You've not shared it with the right people. You're not yet connected where you need to be connected. See, if people won't share your vision, that's not your tribe. That's not your group. That's not your, the people that God is sending you to. Because when you share the vision that God has given you with the people that God has given you to connect with, they will hear you. They will hear that vision. And then because they that purpose has already been revealed. So see, it's not about just sharing a vision and, it, and let me say this right here, that if you have a vision, but you don't yet know the purpose of that vision, let's say that God has given you a, uh, a vision to go to a particular place and minister. This just happened to me. And you contact somebody from that place, and they begin to reveal the purpose, what it's all about. Wow, this just happened this week. And it was the purpose was bigger than what I realized. The vision was clear. And as I shared that vision, this man began to expound on the purpose of that vision. And I know that God has prepared me 
And here's the thing, as I shared the vision, he shared the purpose and it let me know God was preparing him on the other end. Aha. Uh -huh. So I know because I, I've, I've been in this long enough with God to realize that if God gave me a vision and he expounded on the purpose of it, then there's others because it was it ended up instead of a couple of meetings, it was a whole region that God's talking about doing a move in. <clears throat> I didn't realize to that extent. I was still thinking smaller. And as he said it, it I knew it was true. I knew that it was. And it wasn't because it triggered something in my pride. It was because I knew that the words that he was saying was life. And it's just like God. See, God has always called us to do something bigger than what we're able to do. And But he wants to connect us with others. He wants to bring others together. Let's read a couple of scriptures before we get too far in this. Uh, both of these are going to be coming out of Ephesians. And the first one is in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. And he said, uh, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that means you see, you have vision, right? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. You'll see the purpose. Hallelujah. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So you'll not only will you have a vision, you'll know the purpose, you'll see the fruit. It's going to produce fruit. Hallelujah. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward? He didn't say to you, he said to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power. <laughs> wow, God has power. And because of seeing what God is doing and understanding what God is, wow, we begin to, when we, when we share this vision to usward and the purpose and the fruit, and we join together in this labor, then kingdom matters begin to get settled. Kingdom things begin to happen. Not my ministry. I've got a sign here that says Living Water Ministries. That's what I'm doing here. But that is part of the kingdom. It's not an individual movement. Hallelujah. So he says here in <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Walk worthy. Have integrity. Walk worthy of the vocation that you're called into. Have, it, have that right integrity. Be somebody that others can trust. Because, I'm going to tell you, there's enough foxes in the hen house. There's enough snakes in the grass. We need to find people with a like vision, with a like integrity, and a like purpose that we can join with. Paul told Timothy, he said, quit you or equip, equip you men of like faith. What do you mean like faith? A like vision, like integrity, and a like purpose. Hallelujah. So he said in verse two of Ephesians four, now he said, with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering, Forbearing one another in love. Forbearing one another. Forbearing means that I'm, I'm helping you. I'm suffering some things for our relationship's sake, just like you're suffering some things with me. Why? Because there's a purpose down here. There's a cause. David said, isn't there a cause? Isn't there something that we're doing that's bigger than us? If it's not, then we need to go find the work of God. Because God's work, the kingdom, is growing. And God wants to include us 
And he will if we'll get on board with his plan and not try to convert God to our plan. Ah. So he said, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So not just trying to stay together, but there's the bond between us is peace. The bond between us is I love you. And I'm willing to put up with some things if you'll please put up with me. And we'll build the kingdom of, of God. Hallelujah. With God's help, with his vision that he shared to us. Not a, not a marketing plan that we came up with, but with the vision of God. Ezekiel said, I was in, in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I saw the heavens open up as a scroll, and I saw the visions of God. I saw the visions of God. How about that? So it's not just one vision. I saw the visions of God. What he was saying, God showed me a lot of stuff. Woo. When I got into spirit, God showed me some things that was not just about me. What am I supposed to do? How am I going to get money? How am I going to get resources? Well, the kingdom has it all. My father owns the cattle of a thousand hills, the word says. Here in East Texas, we say, and all the potatoes under those hills. Amen. All the oil, everything, all the gold and the silver and the, and the diamonds, it all belongs to God. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Verse 4 says, for there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. God said, I'm just working on one kingdom. There's kingdoms of men. There's a kingdom of light, and there's a kingdom of darkness. But God said, I'm really just working on one kingdom. I'm willing to include the kingdoms of men because he's willing to include men, men and women. When I say men, I'm talking about men and women. He's willing to include us. He chooses to work through the foolishness of preaching. He takes the, the base elements of the world to confound the wise, the foolish things to confound the wise. I fit that category. Praise God. And he said, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through us all and in you all. I like what Jesus said in John 15, I believe it is. He said, if I be in you and you be in me, then you can ask whatsoever you will. What did he mean? If, if I'm in you, I'm going to reveal some things. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a vision and a purpose. And you be in me means you're going to get that right integrity. We talked about in Romans chapter 12. Verse 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is but your reasonable service. And be not conformed with this world, but be ye therefore transformed by the renewing of your mind. Get your integrity built in you. Paul said to the, I believe it was the Galatians, he said, my little children in whom I travail in birth again till Christ be formed in you till Christ be formed in you. What does that, what does that mean till Christ be formed in us? Well, he said over here in uh, Philippians chapter two, verse three, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in all lowliness of mind, let us esteem others better than ourselves Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's forbearing one another. And then he goes on in verse 5, and he says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. <laughs> That's taken on transferring the integrity of God into us and it becoming our integrity, that our, our integrity is transformed 
by the integrity of God implemented upon our life. My, my, my. He said here, uh, Job did, he said, though God slay me, yet I'll trust him and I'll maintain mine own ways before him. He may not, I'm just going to keep being just an old natural carnal guy. No, Job was a righteous man in his days. Amen. So he was saying, my ways are God's ways. I, the integrity of God is imprinted in my life, and I'm going to continue in that. No matter what happens, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how rough it gets, I'm going to continue in that. That's what Job was saying. Though he slay me, yet I'll trust him, and I'll maintain my own ways before him. Wow. You know, that, that's such a powerful uh, a powerful statement that he said there, realizing that the Lord may allow some situations uh, to come into our life that, and it seems like that uh, maybe the devil just got after us. <laughs> well, he did get after Job. But there was a reason behind it. And that, that scripture that I was quoting, you don't remember it from the other sessions. It was Job 13, verse 15. Though he slay me, yet I'll trust him, and I will maintain my own ways before him. <laughs> 16 says, he also shall be my salvation. For a hypocrite shall not come before him. <laughs> You know, a, a hypocrite is somebody that says one thing and does something else. That's why Job said, I'm going to maintain my own ways. I'm going to behave myself in the things of God. And so you see, when, when this vision and integrity and purpose comes and it attaches in my life, and it attaches in your life, and then God connects our paths, hallelujah. Then we, as Ephesians 4 said, we endeavor, we work on having the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, not in fighting and backbiting and clamoring and all of these things, but in loving one another. He said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, that you have love one to another. It's quoted a lot of times, one for another, but the old King James says, one to another. See, I can have something for you, but it doesn't benefit you until I get it to you. When I get it to you, it can produce fruit in your life. If your water bill is due or you need groceries, I can, I can show you here on, this, on camera. I've got $100 for you, but until I get that in your hand, it's not going to help you. So we are endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace because we have the vision of God. We have the integrity of God that is bonding us together where we can trust one another. We've learned to trust more than our imagination, more than our uh, fears, we trust. And we say, Lord, I, I struggle with trusting sometimes. But God, let this trust build in me. I feel to go, let's go into prayer right now. Lord, we, we struggle sometimes with our relationships with one another. But God, we've got this vision that you've given us, and we know that we're called into this great gospel, and we understand that there is a a work to be done. There's a, there is a cause, and we know that there's a cause. And God, I ask you that through this series of teaching right here, God, that you would hide me behind the cross, that only you would be seen. And Lord, that each and every one of us, as we labor together in the kingdom, that we would not take the credit for what's being done, but that we would yield ourselves to one another, and we'd learn to trust each other. We'd learn to trust our brothers and sisters in Christ, in you. Hallelujah. 
You said in your word that you, in John 10, were the door of the sheepfold. And if a man come up any other way, he says, it's a thief and a robber. So God, I know that I've got to go through that door. And I know that my brothers and sisters have come through that same door. I trust you, Lord. I trust my brother. I trust my sister. And I share my vision, integrity, and purpose with this world because it's the vision of your kingdom, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for being a part of this VIP series. Share these videos with others. Uh, and right here, we love you. We thank you. And we're still keeping the faith. God bless.